What up, what up, you guys? It's your boy Wolf Said, the engineer, and this is. Well, this is not so clipped after all. This is Kerbal Guide. So, before we go to 1.1, I wanted to finish up 1.5 with a blast. I have designed an airplane to go around Kerbin as fast as possible. Now, with us today to achieve this goal is B9 S2 airplane. So, I got two cargo bay. Each of them has several of heat sinks and some um, reactors to provide us with energy along the way. From the back, we got two Saber M engine. Those are the medium size engine. Now, uh, I got, oh my god, how many wings I got? There is a hell load of wings. I'm using adjustable landing gear as usual, and I got two landing lights just in case we landed in the night. So let's get this beast on the runway and we'll talk along the way. Alright, there it is with all of its glory. Let's set up Megjep. So we're gonna go on a 90 degree heading, 30 degree uh, pitching up, and let's get it rolling. I'm using a camera tool for those uh, wonderful shots as you can see here. Oh, look at that. In the original design, I had around 8 engine, but for obvious reason this didn't work because first it's heavy, very heavy, it didn't take off, and when it did take off, it goes in a hypersonic velocity and blew up. So, there was several of theory in regard for achieving this goal. As you're probably aware, one of the most important things is heat. When you go up in the atmosphere and you reach a hypersonic velocity, you might heat up and blow up. So to prove the theory which was on the forum recently is add enough heat sinks to the plane. I've added around 200 of them. The theory didn't work. Heat sink does help, but not that much. So the maximum velocity I was able to achieve was 1500. Uh, right now, as you can see, the engine is pulling up some thrust, barely able to lift up the airplane. I'm, I might guess we will have to change our heading. Right, so pitch it down a little bit to have some acceleration. Once those engines got up to speed, they will uh, produce at least 1500 kiloton of thrust. But for now, well, just say it's in a stable state. In regard for the heat sink, as I've noticed, it does work up to 100 meter per second extra, but that's the maximum it's gonna grant you. But of course, that's not enough to achieve our goal. So to make it simple for you guys, I have break it down into five aspects. How to achieve the best runaround in Kerbin, and there is five major aspects that we're gonna tackle to achieve this goal. So, we will start with number one. Number one is the wings. You want enough lifting surface to lift up your airplane, but does not cause drag or a lot of drag. So I'm going to turn on the drag model. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. As you can see, I have turned on the aerodynamic forces overlay. Please remain seated and fasten your seat belt. Okay, so as you can see, those wings are not producing enough uh, drag but they are granting us a hell load of lift, especially at this altitude. Now the whole point of it is, we don't want to slow down, so we can keep our speed into maximum and uh, have a few efficiency, but we will talk about that in the fuel drainage uh, section. So, section number two of the flying at a high speed is the heat sink or the heat issue. When you go at a hypersonic velocity, like right now we are going at 1270 meter per second, your airplane is gonna burn up. Now, thanks fully because of the heat sink, right now we are able to sustain this flight, but in any normal scenario, don't try this at all. No, but again, the, the heat is an actual issue that airplane does face, it, especially when flying up in the air. So, the only solution I have found is, well, it will be tackled in the next uh, phase, which is high altitude. Now, in regard for high altitude, there are several of aspects, which is air pressure, fuel drainage, heat, and also the wing. So, it's all more or less generalized, but to make it more specific, at a higher altitude, you have less air pressure, which means that will cause less drag. And with less drag, you will have less fuel drainage because your engine does not operate at full capacity. Like as you can see right now, we are 
spent in 2.17 point of uh, liquid fuel while we are flying at 1310 meter per second again the whole point is we are not facing any drag on the other end now because at this altitude there is no air well there is no lift so how can we keep up in the air well it's the speed since we are going very fast we are producing enough lift to keep our plane afloat all right so next up is the fuel drainage aspect now in regard for fuel drainage it's relatively simple all you have to do is calculate how much you are spending at your cruising altitude like right now our cruising altitude is 24 kilometer at the speed of 1300 and we are spending two point of fuel per second all we need to know is how long our flight is expected to be and how much fuel do we need for takeoff and landing and then we can have an approximation on how much fuel you're gonna spend like example for this flight I actually estimated it to be around 8,000 but it costed only 7,000 units of fuel and of course as we I've explained already the reason we are not spending fuel or such fuel at a cruising altitude is because we have less engine we got only two engine and they are operating at minimum fuel consumption high in a specific impulse because we are cruising at a hypersonic velocity and the final aspect air pressure or aerodynamic pressure now it's rather relatively simple the higher you go the less air pressure you will have however it is important to notice that there is certain altitude that engine would not function in the real world there will be a combustion failure that's why there is always different type of engine for every flight or every type of airplane for example the commercial airplane does not fly more than 40,000 feet on the other end a jet fighter would fly up to 70,000 feet or the highest altitude is 82,000 by the Blackbird my favorite so point is I have made it so uh, we have spent approximately uh, 7,000 up to now liquid fuel without the landing we are slowing down I'm want, I wanted to reduce my speed and climb down until we reach the uh, runway otherwise I might overshoot as I normally do uh, there is several of important aspects here I've added several of air brakes so I'm gonna keep my engine always running especially among other upon landing but with an air brake on so we will not exceed our uh, landing speed we're not gonna land at a hypersonic velocity and at the same time we do need the engine power because we don't have enough lifting surfaces to keep this plane afloat now we are approaching the um, runway as you can see it's 125 kilometer we are reducing our speed and on a cruising altitude we are still relatively stable we are 55 minutes t minus 50 plus 55 minutes so the whole trip costed us 6500 units of fuel 55 minutes and as you can see the game is going crazy that's why we should be upgrading to 1.1 and we should be relatively happy about it now the uh, the heat uh, thing started uh, let's say relieving the heat from itself so everything is overheated but the whole plane is actually cold right now it's just that the heat sink all right so in order for me not to pour you and with the power of editing we are on the lineup for the runway coming in relatively fast we are going at 180 meter per second captain valentina kermin is going to bring this bird down in one piece mostly and as what captain jabadaya once said any landing you can walk away from is a good landing <coughs> there we go touchdown the wheels is a little bit shaky and I've just remembered that I did not add torque on the wheels so <laughs> it's too late but yeah and we have a touchdown all right so we made it in one hour and we spent 7,000 units of liquid fuel I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'm going to line up this airplane into the museum not so clipped after all indeed i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to hit that like button and share the video for more videos coming soon until next time stay tuned